NESC football fall camp coverage is brought to you by U.S. Lawn, the official lawn care provider of Sycamore Athletics. Let's talk about your captain first, Jeff Brown. What has he embodied really since he was a walk-on when he's come here to now be viewed as a captain, scholarship guy, and really leader of your defense? I think, you know, Jeff has just, he's really been able to have guys gravitate to him by, by the way that he's worked since he's been here. And, and he's made tremendous strides in a number of areas. You know, I mean, he, uh, you know, the way that he's transformed his body, the way that he's improved his footwork, the way that to, to become more efficient at the position. Um, and, and then obviously he's got some natural leadership, as we all know, and, and uh, he sets the tone every single day, starting from walkthroughs to individual. Uh, Jeffrey coaches that group as much as I do, and, and I think that, and Johnny Mays the same way, all the older guys do, and I think that's what you like to see as a coach is that, you know, the expectation is the position, and those guys take a lot of pride in, in that room, uh, you know, performing at a high level. What do you feel makes Jeff tick in terms of a guy off the field kind of being a goofball and his personality and how he talks to the oh man when he steps between these lines though coach it's something to watch. The the thing that I love about Jeffrey is he's always always got that walk on mentality and Jeff's always had a chip on his shoulder since he's been here in a good way. And, uh, you know, he had goals and ambitions for himself. Um, they've never gotten in the way of the, the position or the unit or the team. He's always put the team first and the, and the position in the unit first. Uh, but he's always had that chip on his shoulder, and I think that drives him every single day. And, uh, you know, he's got goals for himself, as I said, and, and uh, comes out here every single day with the desire to get better. And, and, he's real, and he's extremely eager to learn every single day. He's always, always looking for something uh, to, to improve his game. With COVID and extra red shirts, it's not uncommon to see guys, you know, I just want to move on with life. I, football's been great to me, but I want to go. And we've had some guys do that here. But Johnny May's still here. What's it mean to see a guy like Johnny, who's been around the Jonas Griffith, his first year here, Cottrell was on the team. I mean, there's a lot of guys he's been around to know he's still here, and not just still here, but he wants to be here. The thing that you're seeing about Johnny right now is, you know, Johnny's playing the best football he's ever played since he's been here at Indiana State, which is what you love to see, and that's what our program is, such, such great development uh, in every area, uh, on and off the field, the strides he's made in the weight room. Um, he's an extremely smart football player, which you knew you were going to get that. Obviously, his, his father, you know, Scott, is, was a longtime coach, and, and uh, you know, so you kind of knew that you were going to get that mentality from Johnny, and then I think as he got here, he realized that, um, you know, he was going to have to compete and earn everything, and he has. Uh, but like I said, I just am excited for Johnny because he's stuck with it. Uh, he's gotten better every single year. He's been an extremely, you know, key part of all the special teams units. Obviously, he's a key part of our defense right now. Um, and I think that he really, you know, enjoys the fact that he's trying to pay everything forward to the younger guys that was given to him from the Cottrells, the Jonases, you know, all the guys that have been here before him. I don't want to say it was a total fair characterization a year ago to say that you were shorthanded at linebacker, but there were times where you had to tweak your scheme just due to availability of guys. This year, do you feel there's going to be more availability at that position for you? And if so, why do you feel that way? Well, I, I do feel that way, and I feel that way just because, um, you know, the numbers in the room are great, but at the same time, there's great competition there. And, and the gap between the first guy, the second guy, the third guy is, is not very large. And, and that's what's exciting in, in the fact that the guys still, you know, come together, pull for each other, help each other out, because they know we're going to need everybody. And, and, you know, they know that we're going to need everybody every snap on defense. We're going to need everybody uh, to contribute on special teams. And, and you never know who you're going to be lining up next to at any point in time throughout the year. So uh, I, I do feel that that is the case, and it's been exciting because, um, like I said, it's just it's given us an opportunity to create great competition. And guys know that, you know, I, I, I've got to be on it every single day because I've got somebody on my heels. You've had a lot of young guys in camp get tons of reps, and we talked about that. That's what's so important about fall camp is you can go from, you know, thinking, man, I'm third, fourth string, not going to see much time, to all of a sudden you're getting the majority of the reps that day. You're young guys at this position, Coach. What have you liked and what have you seen from them, not just in terms of their production, but also the adversity that they've had to hit too here in camp? They're all business, number one. I mean, they they uh, they take the the, the – the mentality that I'm not going to count my reps, I'm going to make my reps count. And that's what you've seen all of them do. And whether they get three reps one practice, 15 the next, 
10 the next, 7 the next, it doesn't matter. They, they go out there and every single play, they're striving to be great with whatever number of reps that they do get, knowing that at some point in time, you know, their number's going to be called. And uh, they're excited to, uh, to have that opportunity and, and go out there and help their teammates win. As you get closer here to North Alabama prep next week, I know this is overall looking at your linebackers, but just as a defense, how much further along do you feel you are in terms of getting to that cohesive unit to play more together as a unit? That, of course, was a goal when you, you know, set set forth here in August. Well, that's what we just told them today. You know that this thing's been built over time, and they've put a lot of time into it. And um, you know, it says a lot when you do really feel like you're a player-led unit, and you feel like these guys have higher expectations for themselves as a unit than you could ever put on them as a coach. And that's exciting to see uh, because you don't have to constantly be the one to get them going. You got a lot of self starters out there. And um, I, I think that, you know, as you said, we are much further along. I, I think that they've done a great job of uh, first understanding what we were doing, understanding how we wanted them to do that. But now they understand why. And I think when you get to that point and they understand the why of everything, uh, then you know like you're making strides. You feel like you're making the strides that you need to. And when you hear guys coaching each other and it's an extension of what, what each coach is saying, uh, you feel like you've got a cohesive group that, that is bought in and, and really listening and really taking it. Was Riley able to recognize Dad with his new haircut today? Well, I think the hat helped. Yeah, the hat, the hat for sure helped. She, uh, she came running across the field and ran by me one time. You know, sometimes she gets Coach Schaefer and I mixed up. You know, it, so obviously a tremendous compliment to Coach Schaefer that he looks like me.